Hey, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. We're having a really exciting and fun time here. We're doing another um, architectural type uh, composition with some brickwork. I hope you'll um, join along with us here. I'm going to cover all the details, how we get everything done on this painting. And um, you're going to see that it really turns out beautifully. We want to capture that really beautiful look of light, uh, strong sunlight on the building here. It's a street uh, scene, kind of like a nice, beautiful city type scene with a doorway, a nice green doorway with some red brick building and uh, interesting sidewalk and some gorgeous light fixtures here So and shadowing. So um, buckle in, have a fun time of it. We're going to just get started in a second. All right, we're going to get rolling here. We actually saw the finished painting just a second ago. And um, we we're going to ask ourselves, how did we get to this uh, finished uh, composition? Uh, what are the, all the steps we have to do? Um, some of the techniques and methods uh, for our painting and drawing. We'll cover it right now. And uh, the first thing I do is I, I tape down my uh, paper, uh, watercolor paper, onto my uh, working table. And then I take a, um, this is an uh, 8 by 10 pre-cut mat. And the window is four and the window here is four and a half by six and a half inches, and eight by ten inches is the overall frame size. This will fit into a frame. This uh, mat, pre-cut mat. So the thing I'll do is just start out with this, so that I can at least have a an idea of the size of the painting. I have to keep in mind: is it going to is my subject matter going to fit into a standard size uh, mat window? Because this way, if you paint a painting and it comes out real good, you can just automatically get a mat for it, a pre-cut mat, and then put it into a frame and you have yourself a nice, some wall art for your place, a gift for someone. You could put it in a show, put it for sale, whatever you want. It's up to you. You're the artist. You're, I don't know. Everyone's different. You might like to just uh, give your art away or some of you might like to put it on your walls or your place. Some of you are getting into maybe showing some of your work out there in the... Uh, art centers in your local area and so forth. So whatever your goals are, whatever your aim is, that's fine. Um, but this is really a huge help. So I put four little dots right in the corners here. And then I have to just have to make sure that my painting is a little bit larger than where those, those dots are so that I have a, a large enough painting that when I drop that mat on there, I have a little bit of wiggle room to move it around. And then you can kind of find even a more pleasant looking um, spot for your for your mat on top so that that window if you have more room on your paper to move it around the window of your mat so let's say you put your mat down on top of your painting and you have more room to do this and move it around a little bit you can actually make the painting look even more exciting and better your finished painting because sometimes if you move your mat a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit up, a little down, you get a little bit of a different feel. Uh, the painting actually can a lot of times be enhanced by just taking a mat, getting it on there, and then moving around. So thus, we want to make sure our painting is at least an inch or larger um, than the window opening of this pre-cut mat. So I have my dots here. So now I see that I can go right out to the edge this way. And then I think if I stay, here's the dots right there. So if I stay about an inch up, I'll be fine. I'll go right across up here, that way there. And this is the dot here. I go down at least an inch and that's fine. And I just have to be really careful. I'm going to leave those dots there. You'll never see them when we're done painting, but I'll leave those small dots on the picture. This way when I'm setting up my subject matter in this painting, I'll just make sure that I don't um, have an issue with something being too close to the bottom, like our subject matter here. So. Um, I'll just keep that in mind as I work. So the second thing we'll do is um, we're going to do, uh, I'm hoping you'll use my finished painting at the beginning of the video. I hope you'll do a screen capture or screenshot of that and then save that to your phone or your iPad or your home computer. Uh, if you need to, you just look up online uh, how to do a screenshot or how to do a screen capture. And then you just type in what type of computer you ha have or what type of phone you have. And you can do it real simply that way. And this way you're actually using my finished painting to work from because that's what you really want to do. You want to work from a finished watercolor painting versus a picture or a photograph because then you can really 
um, match up all the colors the same, and you'll kind of be able to really, as you're working with your paint colors and your washes, you'll be able to easily translate that from a painting versus if you're working from a photograph, which all of us do, but uh, what I'm thinking is if you're painting from my paintings, it's better if you just paint right from my finished watercolor painting. I think it's better to do it that way. And then um, at that point, you're, you'll be, uh, I think, better off doing it that way. Better uh, reproduction of what we're doing here. So um, let's get started. I'll use a uh, architect's ruler. So this is an architect's ruler. You can get these online at art stores. They're readily available. And the reason I'm going to use this is because you can set up your paper uh, with your subject matter using a, like if you're going to, we're going to do a, a door, like a city scene, a door with some lamps on the side, some uh, lanterns, uh, lighting. So I know myself usually if it's a typical door, so if, like if you can imagine, I'll see if I can, a typical door is usually three feet wide, three feet wide by 80 inches tall. So that's you standard doors are this this measurement in the United States anyway. And then sometimes doors can be higher, it depends. Sometimes they have transoms over the top and things, but let's just say we're gonna do uh, a double door. So that's gonna be six feet wide, like this, three feet and three feet. So three feet and three feet is six feet wide, like so. And that gives us our dimension of what we're looking for here. We're looking for a double door in this painting, which is going to be two, three foot door or an, an opening that can, you know, can fit a, a, a double door at three feet each door. So a double door and then 80 inches high. So now what we can do is I can give you the measurements of what I'm going to do. So if you don't have an architectural ruler, that's fine. But I'm using a three eighths uh, scale. So on my architectural ruler, it says three eighths here. And what I did is I set it onto my paper and three eighths scale on an architectural ruler gives me a perfect size for my door where I still have plenty of room around it to paint my bricks and the rest of our scene. So this we're going to, I'm going to use that three eighths uh, inch scale. And what I'll do is once I get that done, I'll give you the measurements in inches and centimeters. So if you don't have an architectural ruler, you could just take this and I'll translate it for you in just a second. So we have a six foot wide door. So we're going to go like this. We're going to go up here. So I'm keeping my door a little bit higher than the bottom for our... So I'm going to go across six feet like that. So that's six feet wide. And then 80 inches. Now this is going to be a little more interesting. Um, 80 inches should be seven foot eight. So I go down here and say six foot. So then I line up my ruler the opposite way. Let me do it this way. Seven foot eight, six foot, seven foot, and then four, and this is three, six, nine, approximately there. Okay, and then that's my... Now, what I can do is make sure... You can use a square for this too. So let's see if I have a square. I cannot find a square right now or a triangle so I'll just eyeball this here so I'm just gonna go up and try to make the straightest line I can like that up like that 
and I'll keep my ruler level like this and go across like so and go up like this here okay so this is our double door and then if we're talking centimeters the door width is about six centimeters wide by eight centimeters high so if you make this six centimeters wide by eight centimeters high you'll have your uh, door size correct and then I'll just go um, six three three centimeters is the center of the door I'll go to the center of the door like that all right so we have our double door And I'll just to do a little erasing some of the okay okay so that's our double door we have that really looking good then we're just going to go right across with the wall here the uh, door is going to be let's take a look The door is going to be right on the sidewalk level, so it's going to be sitting right on the sidewalk level. There's no um, any kind of trim or moldings under the door, so the door is going to be right on the level of the sidewalk. So I'll make my sidewalk across here, like so. So that's our sidewalk. All right, so we've got our doors, and then we're going to take a quick break. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find my square because I'd like to actually find another stencil I have in my studio. So let me go find that quickly and then I'll come right back and I'm going to see if I can use that stencil for the windows in the door because we'll make some nice square windows in the door here. And if I can find a really good stencil to use, we can save a lot of time and it'll look a little better than trying to freehand draw it in here. Although freehand looks good too, but um, let's try to do it like kind of more accurate and then we can always just, you know, rough it up a little bit when we're painting it so it doesn't look so accurate. But uh, in any case, let's take a quick break. I'll be right back. I'm going to get my square and a couple stencils and we'll get back uh, in business here. Okay, so we're back and we're going to actually keep working here. I noticed that on this door, um, I can make this more even. It looks like this is a little bit wider than wider than over here. So I can just make a little bit of a a center post here in the between in the between the two doors and that evens it out. And then I found a good stencil here maybe we can use. Let's see. Um, for the windows maybe. Let's see. Okay, so that is pretty thin. I might not be able to use this really. Well, maybe I will be able to use this possibly. Yeah, I think this will work good. I'm going to use this stencil like so. And then I'll just use this. Maybe like that. this. That's not going to work. So sometimes stencils don't always work out great. I will actually erase this and start again. And I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of do this by feel, by eye, instead of trying to mess around with the stencil. It's kind of hard to see through the stencil and actually get things lined up correctly. So I'll just try to keep everything even. I'll make a top of the door here. Uh, this door is probably wood. And then we have windows, window panes in the door. So I'll make the, the sides of the door like so. Bottom of the windows here. Like that. Like that. Yeah, sometimes this works better just doing it by eye. That, that looks pretty good. Then we're going to have uh, three panes this way. So first I'll go like this. One, two, one, 
two and three. That looks pretty equally distant, uh, equally distanced. And then here. So that's pretty simple. It's uh, three cubes, basically three squares. Same on each side of each of the same pattern on the both sides of the door. And then we have a six lights on each side here. Like this. And I just divide this in half one more time on each side and that gives us our our windows like this. That's our windows. And then uh, we have we have some recessed panels in the door like so. These are kind of decorative. Just another two squares at the bottom of the door like so. Then we have the handle here. All right, that's looking good. So we have the door complete. Then we'll start working in our brick. And then what I like to do is, um, if I'm going to be doing some brick for my facade on my buildings or houses or whatever I'm doing, I'll try to find a, a flat brush that kind of matches the size of what the brick might be. So I can kind of muster all my flat brushes that I have in my studio or that are I have and I say well this one's probably going to be more like the size I'm going to need for the brickwork. And the simple way I can do this is kind of measure the height of this door. We said this was 80 inches high. So if I use my, I would say it's not even necessary to have to scale anything. We would just kind of look at our brush and say, yeah, that looks like about a, a brick. That, that kind of fits this, a brick for the size of the brick, the, the width of this flat brush here. So we use this one for our brickwork. And uh, we have a sidewalk here. So we might have a couple of lines that come out like this for our concrete sidewalk, like so. And then we're going to um, have, um, well, maybe we'll do the lights. Let's do the lights first too. So we're going to do um, a couple of uh, lanterns, a couple of light, light lantern, lanterns alongside each side of the door and we'll do them kind of simple uh, let's see here okay so the lanterns I think we're gonna put them maybe we'll put the tops of them a little bit below the top of the door so I'll make a little hash mark on each side of the door and that's where the tops of the lanterns are going to be. And then we'll just start from there. And I might just make a mark so that maybe I'll say um, 1.5 centimeters is where I'm going to put the center of my lamp each side. 1.5, 1.5. So this way they both look equal on both sides of the door. We wouldn't want to have one um, lant uh, lantern uh, closer to the door and then one further away that would look kind of not so great let's kind of stick to the way the architecture is things are usually evenly spaced and then I'm just going to do um, I'm going to make kind of like a triangular shape with a square top so a little bit of a square top with a triangular shape like that a couple ang angles like that for the top and they don't have to be perfect we're doing artwork here and then we'll just do the angles down like that and you can always take your ruler and just kind of make sure you're somewhat close in the height of the lamp lanterns so that's good we'll make them both even and then there's another bit of some ornamentation underneath the lantern some metal 
and there's a top to them. I think that looks good. Two good lanterns here. That'll look really fantastic when we start painting everything. And then uh, next thing I'm going to do is take, I'm going to make a soldier course of brickwork across the top of the door. that. So these are going to be bricks that are um, set straight up like this. Then I just have to make sure that my... Okay, so that looks like that's going to work pretty good. The size of these bricks are going to look good with this size brush. Could be a touch smaller for this scale, but it will work. This could be like, uh, they have uh, different bricks uh, out there, like there's jumbo bricks. Jumbo bricks are a little bit larger than your standard size common brick that you'll see everywhere on schools and um, office buildings and um, commercial buildings and things like that. So jumbo bricks are more uh, used with um, sometimes large commercial buildings. Uh, more, more modern looking buildings have larger bricks, sometimes jumbo bricks. Um, so we'll use kind of a jumbo brick. Well, this will look, end up looking like a jumbo brick with this wider. I don't have anything smaller that I can see right now for my flat brushes. So I'll use this one. But this is really perfect. We got everything we need now for our drawing for the most part. Um, now we're just going to um, start with our washes. Let's use our flat brush. Maybe I can use a medium sized flat brush. I think this one will work okay. So this one looks pretty good. And what we'll do is we're going to make, uh, let's make the mortar an orangey gold color. So we'll take some raw sienna, yellow ochre, raw sienna, maybe a touch of brown in there, a touch of orange, cadmium orange, burnt umber, a little bit of red, maybe some cadmium red, maybe a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson. And then I'll just lighten this up so that, it's, so that it's a lighter mixture. So I'll add more water to it so that it lightens it up. We don't want it too dark. So I think that looks pretty good. And we'll just start putting in all of our underlayment, which is kind of a glazing technique. We're just going to start working our orange paint right up along the painting, starting from the bottom where the sidewalk is. And we'll just paint right up alongside the door. Like that. We'll paint around the light. We don't want to paint the light itself. We want to try to keep that. You can go over the top of the light because the top of the light is going to be like a um, black. So that the, the light fixture itself, the lantern, will be black. So, okay, so as you can see, we're getting our, our glazing done, our first glazing, which is going to be the under bit of our painting so that we can paint the bricks over top of this. You could leave it like this and make it stucco. So if you wanted to make this a stucco wall, you could just splash on some smaller bits. Once it dries, you could uh, do some splashing, make it more of a stucco feel, get some really good fine splashing with the um, brushes. This brush isn't good for splashing because it's got very tight hairs, very thick hairs on there. I don't know what this isn't really like a um, good good splashing brush. It doesn't have hold a lot of water. And then you can even do some cross hatching.
And I'll just finish up here. I'll go right up to the top. Now for this, we're going to let this dry. We're going to take a quick break, let this dry. And I guess the main thing I'll mention here is um, for this painting, when you start doing the brickwork, you might want to put very, very light pencil lines. Once this dries 100%, you can take a ruler and go across the page and just maybe make a couple of pencil lines every so often going across the page horizontally. We'll do that. And when it, once this dries, when we come back, I'll draw some horizontal lines here. I'm also going to put a little bit of that orange on the sidewalk here. Just a little bit though, not too much. Okay, so once we get that completed, this first wash, it's like an orangey gold color. That's going to be the mortar underneath for the bricks. And then we're going to paint our bricks with lots of different reds and oranges and a little bit of blues and blacks. We're going to mix it all up and make some really beautiful textures with brick. And I just re recently did a um, video with some bricks and stones. So that should be really fun. If you can go back to that, you'll see how we kind of did that. So it's like kind of a, a fun exercise to do before you might create this painting. I know many of you have seen that video. Some of you may have not. Maybe you just are here for the first time. Just a few weeks ago, I made a video on um, brick textures and stone textures. You'll see that in my... Um, in my uh, YouTube channel in, in the recent videos, most recent videos. And that's something that you can always reference if you want. So I did a little bit of light orange too on the doors a little bit, just to kind of harmonize all the colors. I'm gonna paint these doors green, but um, for the most part, I'll leave them very light, but just put a touch of orange in there. So it kind of just ties all the colors together. The same thing, I added that little bit of orange to the sidewalk. We'll make this sidewalk a little more, um, a little different, maybe some purple and browns and things make it like more of a grayish kind of color. But for the most part, we're in really good shape here. All we have to do now is um, let this dry. And once it dries, we're going to um, set ourselves up to start doing our brick coursings. And you'll see how we do our brickwork, and it's a lot of fun. And then we'll get started. All right, I sped up the um, drying process here. I used my blow dryer and dried off the complete top of the um, watercolor paper. So everything now is dry to the touch. And we can start in here with maybe those first, we mentioned, let's put a couple um, horizontal pencil lines across the picture, just so we can keep our bricks coursings running, running level. We don't want our bricks to start um, going out of level, let's say like this or like this. We want to make sure our bricks are always staying on course like this you could make lines every you know so much you could even measure it out and say let's do it this way let's do it this way so we really can stay really focused and really get this perfect so what I'll do is um, I'm gonna start mixing my brick colors brown red raw umber Cerulean blue. I'm going to start mixing all kinds of cool, interesting colors. Blues, warms and cools, blues, some, some cobalt blue, um, some greens. We're going to put a little bit of greens in these too. So I'm kind of mixing all kinds of really cool colors. Raw umber, burnt umber, orange. We're going to use some orange in there too. Then we're going to also have some uh, black over here. We'll make some darker bricks with some black colors. Okay, so lots of cool colors like this, and we just have to remember when we go to mix more colors eventually, we're just going to use those same colors over and over and over again. If you want to make sure, you know, it should be fine. I don't think you'll have a problem with that. If you want to mix extra colors so you don't run out of colors to do all your bricks, well, then you can do that too. You can actually mix up all the paint you think you're going to need. But I think here we should have enough to do maybe half of this, and then we may have to mix a little more, but we'll see. But good to mix up at least quite a bit to start with. And then what we'll do is we'll start our measuring by using our brush that we're going to use. And then we're going to use, again, I should be using lots of red and lizard and crimson and some yellow, yellow ochre, some burnt sea. And I want to make that red brick color. OK, 
Okay, these are hard to mix. Let's use our larger brush to mix our brick colors. And then green in there too, just to... Okay. Okay, so now this is how we'll do this. We'll take this, and this is our brick colors. And then we'll check a little bit of uh, paint off on the um, sponge. And we'll just start off down here, and we'll start off with a whole brick, like that. So basically all the bricks you're going to have to do are either whole or half bricks, and most of them are all going to be whole bricks like this. They don't have to be exact, but you should kind of be able to get them like this, as you can see. Try to get them all pretty much the same size, if you can, like that. Then the next one you're going to do is a half a brick here. And you leave a little bit of that mortar joint in between. As you can see there, I left that little bit of that under under painting there, that orange. That's our mortar joints. And the same thing too with these vertical joints. And then we'll do another brick here, and this is another whole brick, and that lands halfway on this one, like that. And that's basically your brick pattern the whole way. So now what we'll do is we'll keep working with that, and we'll say let's go three high, and then we'll make a mark at three high. Three bricks high, three courses of brick high, then let's make a line across the paper, even, try to keep that ruler nice and even across the page. And then we take a line, a light pencil line, no one's ever going to see it. And just make, you probably can't see it when we're doing it here on the video. You probably can't see that line I just drew, but you just make it super light enough that you can see it and that's it. And then once you get those three courses up there, you can even measure that and say, how big is this line we just made? One point two, one point two centimeters. So then you could kind of go up and just go 1.2 centimeters like this. Like that, make a mark there. Kind of keep it even, keep your ruler even across there if you can kind of see that. If you have to put marks on both sides, let's say you're not sure if you're tipping your ruler this way or this way, then you just go over here and you make, make the same mark twice. So 1.2 centimeters over here, you make your mark. 1.2 centimeters over here you make your mark on 1.2 centimeters. Then you drop your ruler across there, and this way you know you're perfectly level and you're not going to go on an angle or anything like that. And then you continue working. So now we can continue working. We have plenty of lines going up the, the wall here. And then we'll just continue to work and do some more bricks here, and you can just do them one course at a time. Just go right across, and you don't have to be perfect about it. You just kind of stay on that same pattern. And then we'll get some different colors. We mix up different colors as we go. Browns, blacks. We'll get some blues going here. Let's do some bluish color bricks. You can mix the bricks any color you want. But we try to keep them sort of that reddish clay color. Like that. There we go. And then we have three more courses like here. So we just start again. One. Two. Three. Then we change the color around a little bit, kind of try to mix up the colors, not do the same thing all, all, the, all the way through. Like that. There we go. And then, once in a while, you take a little bit of water and do a tiny bit of splashing. And you do a little bit of blotting. Just to kind of lighten it up a little bit, make it a little bit uh, not everything perfect. You kind of want to mess it up a little bit even. And then keep going. You can always do that at the end too. You don't have to do that now. You can wait till the, you're done painting pretty much and then... So we got one brick there, one brick there, another brick there. And you can just keep going like that. There we go. And if you get a little bit off your coursings or, you know, it doesn't look perfect, don't worry about it. You're pretty much just going to always start the same way. Over here, you're always going to start by either a half or a whole brick. So this one's a whole brick there. Then this one's a half brick. 
and then this one's a whole brick. So you're just going a half brick, whole brick, half brick, whole brick, all the way up. And that sets your pattern going all the way across. And you change up and do some different color bricks, you know, keep things interesting. Like that. Yeah, you just keep working along. Okay, looking good. So you can see this is kind of fun to do. And it's, you know, a little painstaking, but it's kind of fun. The end result is you really get a great looking uh, texture to the walls and the, and the look to the building. Looks very realistic. Like that. And then you can have fun and see how fast you can go. But as long as you're sticking to that pattern of the width of your brush plus that little tiny bit of cement joint and you don't have to worry about maybe marking out all your lines. I'm kind of showing you if you if you tend to hesitate a little bit and you're a little nervous about trying to go up the whole wall without using these lines, then definitely make these lines going across the page, the parallel lines that are level across. So keep making your level lines all the way up if you feel um, you're going to go off um, your mark with your bricks being either tilted one way or the next. So definitely if you feel like you need to do that, just keep doing it. I feel confident I can keep working and it's not going to affect me too much. I can pretty much keep going and I won't um, have a problem with keeping things straight. And I'll just keep going along here. Then I go right carefully around my light fixture. And as you can see, this really is <laughs> enjoyable and you can take your time doing this painting. Okay, I went a little bit over there. That should be a half a brick. So we'll do that, half a brick. Then we'll make this next one darker. So we kind of... Like that. There we go. It's a whole brick here. Okay, my cement joint's getting a little bit too wide. There you can kind of see. I'll try to fix that up a little bit. 
but for the most part it is going along pretty good. Now we're going to make sure we do this over here. We're going to do our uh, soldier courses, which are straight, vertical, the bricks. Like this. Like that, over the top of the door. So I just leave some cement joints, you know, between each of the bricks. You can go faster if you want, here and there. Like that. And then we just continue on. Uh, whole brick here. Half brick here. And we just keep zipping right along here. All right. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe, maybe shutting off the camera and working a little bit more so you don't have to really see me painting all of these bricks. I mean, this is really taking some time as you can see. So maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll finish up the brickwork. You can kind of see how we've been doing the whole pattern here the whole time. Nothing really um, too uh, difficult here. We'll just do the same thing over here. We're just going to start working on this side now. So it's going to be the same idea. Whole brick here, all the way across, whole bricks, full, you know, full bricks like that. Maybe there's, and then here we're going to do a half brick, and then another whole brick here. It's a little bit harder doing it on this side because it's hard to see the joints. This is a point where you might want to flip your paper around. That might be a lot easier if you take your paper and take it off the board. Let's do that. Actually, I won't do that, but you kind of get my idea of take this paper, your, your painting, flip it around and tape it back down again. And then when you're doing your bricks going this way, you're going to be going this way. And if you're left-handed, you'd want to do it the same way. So left-handed, so what, what I'm saying is you always want to be able to kind of see your, um, your full brick as you're going and stopping. It's a lot easier to do it from the left to the right if you're a right-handed person. If you're a left-handed person then you'd want to go this way and this way. And then when you get over to this side, you probably, you might want to go, well, you can actually do it this way. Actually, I can do it this way. The only issue is this. We're working in a spot where you have to make sure you end up on this door correctly. So that's why it's probably easier to flip the paper around if you can. It'll be easier to make sure that you're kind of landing in the right spot with your bricks because you got to go along the door you always have to go full brick half brick full brick half brick so it's harder for me i can't see i can't see that little small mortar joint there you can imagine as i'm going this way i'm not sure where i'm stopping if it's correct or not so it'll be easier if i flip the paper over see how i'm kind of i'm not doing this 100 percent correct here but it's good enough I think it's you get the idea if you need to flip your paper over you can kind of do that it makes it a little bit easier I know a lot of artists like to do that they like to take their paper and flip it around sometimes if they're working so that's up to you if you want to do that I think I can make do like this but let's do this let me keep working I'll stop the tape and I'll get most of my brick done the rest of the way and then we'll finish up and we'll do the doors and the lights. This way you don't have to sit through this, uh, you know, brick after brick after brick. It gets a little monotonous. And I'm sure you probably might say you agree with me that I can kind of just, I'll come back after I get a number of this brickwork done. And then, and then when I come back, we'll do the doors and the lights. How does that sound? You'll let me know in the comment section if you thought I should have kept painting the bricks. Or if you thought it was a good idea that I stop the tape and kind of give you a break and then come back and finish up the door and the lights. Okay, all right. So let's uh, come back in a few. 
All right, we're back. We did it. I did it. I got. I hope you're doing it too. I'm sure you're back at your place and you're getting all your bricks in. This is a time-consuming task for sure. So uh, when we left off, I was right about here about where the door is, the top of the door. Uh, and I just finished up all the bricks while we stepped away. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water. And like I said before, it's kind of good if you can kind of splash... Um, this um, brick wall with a little bit of fresh clean water not too much but get a couple splashes here and there on there get some splashes on there here and there not everywhere though okay and then what you do is we're going to take a, a tissue we'll let that sit there for a second and let it soak into the brick just a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll just kind of take the take the tissue and twist it a little bit set it down and twist the, the um, tissue like this. Here and there. Don't do it everywhere though. Just in little spots here and there. Take the tissue and blot a little bit and then twist a little bit too. And do you see the effect that that has? It kind of gives it a little bit of a, it softens it up a little bit. It makes it look a little more interesting. Kind of like it's rustic. So I hope that'll work for you. Give it a try. You might like the real, um, all the like really, really fine hard edges on all of the bricks. I think it looks better if we do a little bit of blotting, but that's up to you. Totally up to you. And now we're going to get started with our doors. And uh, I'm going to use again, we'll use a square brush. I'll probably use uh, this flat brush here, which is a little larger. So the one we use for the brick is, you can see, this size here. And now I'm going to use a little bit larger flat brush for this. This looks like about an eighth of an inch. Um, let's take a look here. What do we have? This is about a quarter of an inch, approximately, this brush. So now I'm going to take a little bit of water and just clean up the palette a little bit. Like that, and we'll mix up our door color. We're going to make it a nice green color. So I'm going to go with some olive green, some sap green too. So I'll use some sap green, olive green. We can gray it down with a little bit of raw umber too. So you could take like sap green and take raw umber and put it into sap green and it makes it more of an olive green or even yellow raw sienna or yellow ochre. But I think that looks like a good green for the door. So then what I'll do is I'll start doing the door and I'll just start up top and work my way down. And I'll just go right across like so. Get more paint. Then I'll do this side of the door. You can put tape around your door if you want, where the brick is, if you don't want to go over the brick. So if you wanted to, you could take a little bit of artist tape. You have to make sure it's a good artist tape so it doesn't rip up your paper. It's got to be really good artist tape or frog tape or 3M tape. I always... The uh, 3M tape, which is purple, or scotch actually, scotch. And then also this is the frog tape. The green kind. These these are really great. And then also I use Pro Drafting Tape, which is this. All those three work really great. They don't tear up your paper unless you put it on when it's damp. So I might be uh, having an issue here, but hopefully not. So then we're going to go on this side here. So if you want to keep that line straight along the brickwork and you don't want to paint over your brick, you can also do it this way, like that. And then on the sidewalk too, if you wanted to get fancy and use tape to tape everything off, you can do that if you want to make sure you're not going outside the lines. Just some tidbits of uh, information if you like to get things really super accurate and you don't have a lot of patience for trying to blot up paint and fix things. That sometimes helps. And then we're going to go right down the center of the door like this. We're going to make sure we go around that door handle. We might make that black, the door handle black, so maybe we don't have to worry about that, but we'll go around it for now anyway. Okay. There we go. So now we have our door completed. 
And then we're going to do our windows. Now the windows. We're going to make the windows uh, pretty dark. Let's make them burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, ivory black and Payne's gray. Uh, let's make it more, uh, some red in there, burnt sienna. Maybe some green in there too, put in some green. I'm going to mix all some of the colors we've been using so far. So I mixed in French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of sap green. I think that should be good. We'll make this really dark and we're just going to do, and what I forgot to mention is we want to leave the grills of the window. So you're going to want to leave some white paper along these uh, lines here, these lines for the window grills. So I'm going to be really careful when I paint here. So I'm going to make sure I leave those grills like that. And then when I go down this side, I want to make sure I leave that little white space in between the windows. Can you see that? You can always make them smaller first, make your square smaller first, your rectangles here. Make your rectangles smaller as you go, and then you can slowly work them closer together as you finish it up and get it closer to where you need it. Like that and like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's that's pretty good. You can dab, dab a little bit here and there just to get it just right. Pick up some more paint up here, same thing. There we go. Then you go in and touch it up a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we have some interesting looking washes going now for the door. What we'll do is we'll let this dry 100%. So let's let's do this and we'll kind of see how this turns out here. Uh, that looks good. So you can use some tape if you want, again, to tape off some things just like a house painter might do. Someone that works with painting, like house painting, or if you paint your own house, interior of your house, you paint rooms and different things and you'll put some uh, you know, painters tape around some things like some walls or trim or doors or windows, whatever it is. You can think the same way with um, doing artwork. You can tape off some things here and there if you want to. And I think this is looks looks pretty good. I, I, we're going to need some shadowing here. So we'll make some shadowing soon. All right, let's take a quick break. What I'll do is now that I'm taking a quick break for five or ten minutes, when I come back, I'll be a little more um, refreshed. My concentration will be a little better, and I'll be able to kind of figure out the rest of what we have to do here. It's not a lot, but now comes the time when uh, we need to be really, like, kind of have a good game plan finishing up this painting. So we don't want to kind of go in there and maybe lose our concentration, and then the next thing you know, we're painting over things we shouldn't be. So I'll kind of explain why I say that in just a second, but let's let this dry. I'm going to use a blow dryer and dry off the paint on the window uh, glass for the doors. And then from that point, we're going to do the light fixtures and a little bit of shadowing. And I think we should be fine. Okay, let's get back here and uh, do some fine details. So I think the first thing I want to do is maybe just get a little bit of... Um, light inside these windows because right now they're really really dark we made these really really dark the washes for these window for the panes the window panes of the glass so what i want to do is i usually take some fresh clean water i just put some fresh clean water in my glass here dry off a little bit of the um water off my brush there so that my brush is basically just damp and then what i want to do is make just a couple lines maybe for some light inside here so what i'll do is just tap on some water here on the black paint that we just put on for the window glazings and then quickly just lift up with some 
tissue like that. And then what that does is it kind of makes it look like there's some light in here inside this room. So I'll do another bit there like that and then lift up. And maybe a little bit up here too. Okay, so that kind of looks like there's something in the room beyond these doors. I think that this is a good idea to kind of just add a little bit of damp brush and lift up. Maybe a little bit of mm, lines, a couple vertical lines here. Like that. And that should be fine. Makes it feel like there's some light inside that room beyond these doors. And then what we'll do is uh, next we're going to get our shadow in underside so we're having our sunlight coming from this direction so we'll put our we really didn't have to worry too much about the sunlight so far in the picture but now we're kind of going to think in terms of the sunlight is coming it's an outdoor scene this is an outdoor building obviously a street scene basically and we'll have our light insignia here just showing that the light's coming from this direction and that will give us the um that will clue us in on where the shadows are going to be. So if the light's coming this way across the face of this brick wall and uh, by this door, then we know that the shadows are going to be on this side over here. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to make sure we capture that. So we're going to take some, some of this dark mixture we made here. We might not make our shadows as dark. We should make them as dark, I think. I'll just add some purple to it to kind of give it that shadowy feel. And let's get our shadow in. That shadow is going to go all the way across here. I think it starts up here. It goes all the way across here. And I'm just going to use the same color again that I use for the windows, window panes. Like this, right across. Like that. Like that. And then the same thing over here. This is going to be another shadow going this way. Right alongside that door. You can tape this off again too if you want. If you want to tape off your um, brick wall so you don't go over that for some reason. If you feel you might have an issue going over that. The only thing we have to make sure is that this line is nice and straight. And again, tape can help with that if you want. It depends how exacting you want to be, but I don't think we need to be that fancy about it. But this is the other side of that shadow. So you have this shadow over here on top, underneath, where the door is up here. So that's the shadow. The door is recessed inside the doorway a little bit. And that's the shadow there. Then I might take my brush, dry off, rinse, rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, just to have a damp brush, and then and just kind of think that looks fine. It'll dry looking a little better too. But that looks pretty good, right? We have a nice dark shadow there. Really makes a powerful feel of sunlight here in the seam. And uh, now that we have that done, let's do uh, the green in the, I'll use, around, I'll, I'll use the small brush we were using, the small brush we used for the brick. I'll use that to go in and do the, we never finish the door here. We want to make sure we finish the door here. So let's get that done here. I'm just going to finish those. Uh, grills, the grills on the door, like so. Much better now. Doesn't that look much better? That looked a little bit awkward, right, with the, just the stark white paper. We just had to finish this up anyway. And that's all we have to do is finish up those green grills on the windows. Just like that. Looks good. Then we're going to, what next are we going to do? Let's do some, I'm 
going to warm up that. I want to use a little bit of the um, raw sienna actually, raw sienna over here. I'm just going to put a little bit of warmth in those uh, shadows in the inside of the door, in the, and even some cool too. Let me put warm and cool, some blue and some warm shadows in the inside of the room. And let's see here, let's get our light fixtures in. I'll take the dark darks that we have here. Light's coming from this direction, so... Let's see, these are pretty dark. These might be more of a... We're going to pretend that these are maybe just catching the light a little bit on the tops of these fixtures, maybe. Maybe over here they're a little darker on this side. And they're catching a little more light on the other side. And then we'll put a little bit of... So this is just the time when you take your time and get some bottoms on the lights. Put that little bit of ornamentation underneath the light fixtures, just like that. A little bit of ornamentation on the top of the light fixture, like so. You can always go in with a tissue and take a little bit of paint up like that on the side of the fixture so that it feels like it's catching some light. Like that. Then we are going to make a little bit of some blue for the uh, fixtures. It's maybe picking up some of the light from the sky. Okay, and I'll use this and I'll get some black paint on there and we'll just do the, put a little bit of the handle on the door, the lock up here. And then we're also going to do a touch of uh, some shadowing on the on the panels on the door. So let's just um, we're going to get a little bit of the very very light. I'm using the very very edge of my brush just to get a little bit of a line there, and then a little bit of a line here. These are the panels in the door, and the same thing over here. The light is catching right there. And then we don't see the other side there, so that's just like this. And then we can go with a little bit of a lighter shadow, maybe some of that purple. And we'll do a little bit of shadowing by the light fixtures. And I would just do these very, very lightly, like that, just barely. Just a little dab of some shadowing there on the light fixtures, and I think that'll look fine. Just an indication of the shadowing on the light fixture, and we should be good. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then we'll just do a quick couple lines like this for the side of the frame of the fixture, like that, the light fixture. Sometimes if it goes... Sometimes if there's an issue, no worries. You can blot it up and start again. I'll do some more shadowing here. But the shadows, you can be a little bit... Um, you can do them like a little bit uh, scribbly. Like your shadows won't want to be too harsh. Just something like that to give it that feel of the light coming across the picture. Like that. So there we go. We have the picture almost completed. Let's get our foreground in. So we're going to do our sidewalk now. Let's do our sidewalk with very, very, uh, you know, kind of muddy looking colors. We don't want to go too...
let's do some cerulean blue um cerulean blue uh alizarin crimson maybe a little bit of burnt umber maybe a little bit of some green get some green in there maybe we'll get a, even a little bit of black in there and that might be good let's it's going to be pretty bright though that 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 sidewalk's going to be pretty bright so I would leave it very very light I wouldn't put a real I would keep a super only problem with this is got to get my round brush my round brush to get the splashes in there I need some splashing in there dry off the brush a little bit get that concrete feel with the splashing like this Some nice stone textures. Can do that too on the picture a little bit. And then blot it up a little. Up there. You can blot some down here too. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's take a look and see how it looks with our mat over top. That looks pretty good. Then you can move your mat around and just kind of see how how it looks is the does it look better with more sidewalk on there does it look better if the sidewalk is just a little bit diminished like that i think that looks pretty good there with a fair amount of the sidewalk in there we can also once this dries once the sidewalk dries now because we just put a pretty decent wash on there um we could actually add a little bit of lines that we've drawn in with the pencil we could put a little bit of just a touch of a little bit of darker wash on the lines of the sidewalk just to give it a little more um, uh, realistic feel of like a sidewalk on the front of this um, building here. And I also think too we could use a little bit of highlighting maybe in the front of the building here we could use a little bit of some raw sienna or yellow ochre mixed in the top of our tube of uh, titanium white. So we have our titanium white here, and we have a needlepoint brush. And now what I can do is just add a little bit of light. So you can add a little touch of light, but you would be really, use it very sparingly, I would say. So what I might do is just do a couple little splashes of light here and there. I might do a little bit down here too, just catching the bottom of these. And this over here, maybe just a little bit there. There might be a little bit of light there. How about up here? Yep, a little bit there on top of the lights, maybe. Maybe a little bit of light catching there. And I think that is really just perfect. Let's do a little bit of that darker dark here for the sidewalk. I think this is dry enough now. We can do a little bit of, if it's too dark, blot it up a little bit. Or darks wouldn't hurt here a little bit. Kind of tie down this bottom of the wall here a little bit. That might look good. Okay, there we have it. You can take this idea and then just expand it. You could make like a larger um, building with windows and doors, you kind of match everything together. You know, you could really, the sky's the limit on what you can do with this, but 
using these beautiful architectural features like bricks and stonework and all the fascinating materials that they use out in construction, you know, you can have just a really a fantastic and fun time creating paintings using this as like one of your um, beautiful uh, elements in your painting that can really draw a lot of attention to your artwork. So I think this is a great fun way to get practiced up on doing brickwork and things like this. And uh, you know, from there you can develop it, or if it's just for a practice exercise to get better with your brushwork and, you know, maybe do some practicing on brickwork in case you ever have to do some brickwork with a scene that you might uh, um, work on maybe sometime in the city, you're doing a city scene or maybe a, a house or some kind of interesting place you go or some pictures you might see that you like and you want to do some uh, architectural features like brickwork or stonework or doors and light fixtures, things like this then you've already practiced it a couple times and it's great. You'll already remember back to when you practiced it and you'll be able to execute it a lot faster once you're uh, doing it again because you'll just remember back. It'll kind of snap into place for you where you say, ah, I remember we did this uh, on a video with Chris Petrie. We had a fun time. We did all the brickwork. Yeah, I remember that. I, I remember how we did the door and the shadows and the lights, fixtures, and it'll all come back to you and then you'll be able to have so much more fun and an easy time creating something like this if you do um, decide to maybe... Or at some point, if you decide you're painting a painting and you want to add in all these type of features that we're covering here. So uh, just another fun video here. I always mention, please, if you haven't subscribed, right on the right-hand side below, there's the subscribe button. If you want to continue watching along with me here and all of us here on my channel, you just click the subscribe button on the right-hand side below. And this way, YouTube will alert you that we're creating a new video. And um, you'll see what I'm doing currently. And you can also go back in my archives. They have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, that are similar to this and all other meet, uh, subject matter too as well. Flowers, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, figures, portrait painting, everything in watercolor. So rest assured, you can always stop by my channel in my archives to look up old information, older videos that are done beautifully. And I cover all the subject matter that you could ever uh, imagine. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for coming by and painting along and uh, happy painting.